Welcome to Numeric Errors. This is the second course in the Common Security Flaws training series. I am Josh Bressers, a member of the Red Hat product security team. This course highlights numeric errors, including security flaws introduced by overflow integer values or miscalculating array indices. Before we get started, let's do a brief review of some definitions. Flaws are program errors or bugs. Security flaws are bugs with potential security impact. Vulnerabilities are security flaws that are exploitable by attackers. Vulnerabilities are caused by security flaws, but not all security flaws result in a vulnerability. This course will start off with an explanation of numeric errors. Next, we introduce integer overflows and walk through a few examples. Finally, we conclude with tips on tracking array sizes and correctly calculating array index offsets. Let's start with an explanation of the numeric errors class of security flaws. Numeric errors cover two different types of numeric flaws. The first type has to do with the limitations or constraints of the platform when handling certain number ranges. For example, systems typically store integer values in fixed size containers such as 32 or 64 bit blocks. Similarly, floating point numbers are only precise through a limited value range and may yield consistent but unexpected results when representing some floating point values. The second type involves errors in the developer's arithmetic. This is seen in formulas to calculate things such as array or buffer sizes and the classic off by one indexing error. The first numeric error security flaw commonly made by developers is that of the integer underflow and integer overflow. Unlike input validation, integer overflows are a bit harder to describe. In many programming languages, integer values are stored in a confined space. You can see this in C, where numbers are represented as 8, 16, 32, or 64-bit integers. When the upper or lower boundary of this space is reached, the integer value rolls over, or overflows. This can make your really large number drop to a really small number just by adding 1. Conceptually, you can think of integer overflows like a car odometer, the thing that counts the car's mileage. Once that mileage value hits the max, it rolls over to zero. Similar concerns occurred for Y2K. The year was being stored in two digits, so when we entered the year 2000, the year 1999 would roll over to 1900. In the example above, the space only allows for two digits to be stored. If we store a 9, then add 1, the result is 10, a two-digit number. We have space for both digits, so no problem. However, if we have 99 and add 1, we get 100, a three-digit number. Since we only have two digits of space, we have to drop one of the numbers in order to store the value. In computer systems, the most significant bit, the one on the left, is the one dropped, leaving us with 99 plus 1 equals 0. The previous example was for base 10 numbers. Actual systems store the integers in 1s and zeros, or base 2, though the conceptual overflow process does not change. On the top, we have number 63 represented in binary by six ones. If we add one, the resultant overflows into the seventh bit. Since we're using an 8-bit container, everything works as expected. On the bottom example, we have eight ones in an 8-bit container. That's 255 or negative 1, depending upon signness. What happens if we add one? Well, the result would overflow into the ninth bit, which doesn't exist, so it gets dropped, resulting in a value of zero. Coincidentally, the signness of the integer doesn't matter. 255 plus 1 equals 0, and minus 1 plus 1 equals 0. Some cases, the signness can matter. While this does not lead to the traditional overflow of values being dropped, it can lead to security flaws. For instance, if we take the base 2 representation of 127, or 7 ones, in an 8-bit number and add 1, the result overflows as 1 in the 8th bit. Nothing was lost. However, we now have another problem. How do we interpret that value according to the C specification? The result of this type of overflow is undefined and depends on the context and processor architecture. If the value is unsigned, we have the value 128. If it's signed using 1's complement, minus 127, signed 2's complement, minus 128, signed in magnitude representation of negative 0. Lucky for us, most architectures use 2's complement for signed number representation, though we still must concern ourselves with whether the number will be interpreted as a signed or unsigned value. 
Here's an integer overflow reported as part of a vulnerability in OpenSSH 3.3. Look at the fourth line, the one beginning with x malloc. Now assume that the size of a character pointer is 4 bytes and the argument to x malloc is an unsigned integer. On line 1, the value of nresp is directly taken from an SSH packet. We can craft that value such that nresp times 4 overflows the unsigned integer value being passed to x malloc such that x malloc allocates a small number of bytes. The for loop on the next line would then copy an externally specified string value from the SSH packet overflowing a buffer via the packet get string function. Based on the string contents, a crafted packet could allow attackers to execute arbitrary code. Generally, some things to be aware of or consider when searching for integer overflows include the integer container size, is it 8, 16, 32, or 64 bits? The container signness, signed, unsigned? More information on integer overflows can be found by searching for CWE190, which discusses integer overflow, or the OWASP entry on integer overflows. The final flaw of this course is array index errors. Array index errors are a class of arithmetic flaws whereby a developer does not properly calculate array offsets or doesn't ensure that an array index is within the array boundary. The classic instance of array index errors is the off by one error usually caused by an incorrect calculation of an index. Such errors may allow attackers to crash programs or execute code. Here's an example of an array index flaw. Above, the array get index function returns a specified index in the given array. While the code has taken steps to validate the array, index, and array len values, it fails to take into consideration the size of each item. In C, the index offset calculation should be based on the array item size. In this case, the size of the void object is 1 byte. Therefore, if the size of the values in the array are larger than 1 byte, the offset calculation will return a memory pointer that is within the array bounds but will not point to the expected item. This could result in an attacker gaining access to privileged information or causing unexpected program behavior. Array index errors are fairly easy to catch, especially with a good test suite. It's also good practice to track the array boundaries such as with start and end pointers instead of just the item count. This provides easy checks to make sure the memory location is correct. Calculating the array length is easy to do as well, as long as we can determine the size of the array items. Many dynamic languages already do this under the hood, so you just have to worry about the resulting exceptions. This concludes the Numeric Errors course. We encourage you to try the other common security flaws training courses. Thank you for listening.